I moved this from over by that one uh, radish uh, fish tank that I'm going to be making an anaerobic um, brewery. And I moved it over here. It's got radishes popping up. And then a random squash. I don't know where that came from. But I'm going to leave it. That's why I moved it out here into the sun so it can climb along and I'll train it to try to stay right here on the edge so we can still mow. In the end I only had three beans pop up back here. One here, one there, and one there. And they're all stretching and reaching for light which I don't understand because they get a good 14 hours of straight sunlight all day long. But that's okay. That's why I've planted beans in other places. You see my little patch here? That is one day's worth of tree seeds that I pick out of my little patch here. Can you imagine how many tree seeds I pick every day from all my patches? That right there takes me a couple hours alone. I moved this one log from that one little spot. I found all these tree seeds and a prickly plant. That's about three days. Here's the one of those Amish tomato paste that I grew inside. This was that runt I thought was going to die. And now it's the biggest. See that right there? That one, that one. Um, there's a couple more right there and look at that one. This was the runt and now it's the biggest one. Alright. I've got a tomato. Let's get that blossom off the end of it carefully. That way we don't get blossom and rot. Not that that is the main cause of it but that helps if you can carefully pluck the blossom off the end. Yay, tomatoes! This may be from the nursery, but I don't care. In the end, even having nursery tomatoes, as long as I grow three bushels of tomatoes and it costs less than what I'd pay at the farmer's market, I have the I am of the opinion that I did my challenge. If you're wondering what I'm doing, you can help self-pollinate your tomatoes by just gently tapping them. Yay! I think I'm going to have lots of tomatoes. I'm happy. A whole cluster of tomatoes. And this is on that Italian or indigo rose. I can't wait. These look like they're a type of Roma also. I'm going to have some great paste tomatoes this year. I'm excited. My Kirkenecks are popping up. Yay! Look at these beautiful pumpkin pie plants. Oh, I'm excited. I have one carrot popping up in this entire tank. And think what it was or what it is, is my cat uses this tank to climb in through the window. So I'm going to have to put a lid system on here and replant and figure out a way to keep my cat from using this as a shelf. But over here I got a bunch of carrots coming in. So I'm happy. Hermes wanted to say hi while I was filming. Hi homies. More tomatoes on my husky red. Oh, and by the way, I find out, found out why these husky red tomatoes aren't getting very tall.
can you read that? Will it zoom in enough? There we go. Dwarf. Indeterminate. So, we're going to leave it. Uh, that's fine with me if they stay short. I've got tomatoes. I'm happy. This is that bean onion patch that I replanted with potatoes. Um, we don't need to put a chicken wire on top of this. This fence alone is deterring the cats from getting in. So that's good. But I've been contemplating it and I've been thinking about it and I've decided since this bed is just a little different um, in the way I layered my back to Eden and it's got that leaf pile on the bottom and it keeps this bed extra extra wet the bed right now looks all dark and wet because it just rained I've decided not to water this we're just gonna let this bed be and I'm not gonna water it at all unless in August we tend to go three to four weeks sometimes without rain I might water then but otherwise I'm not gonna try to water this bed at all I'm gonna see what happens Fun. The beef steak from the bench that I transplanted are very happy, very, very happy.